Okay, hello. Uh, I'm Steve from OpenLand. Uh, I'm a founder and uh, CTO. Uh, we are doing uh, a messenger for startups and for professional communities. And we, about a year ago, started to use FoundationDB as, uh, as the, our only uh, database for like everything. And I here I want to share our experience. So, um, uh, in this year, we have a lot, about like 30 percent, 30 seconds of um, um, uh, downtime. Not that big uh, cluster itself, so, but it's not that small. It's about two, uh, 200 gigabytes. Uh, about 30 processes that connected to the foundation DB. And we don't have any kind of maintenance. We don't have the DevOps team. We don't have like anyone looking at our consoles. It just works for like for the year. Uh, we didn't touch it. Uh, so, uh, what's our deployment? Uh, is in, we, we started from uh, the very small deployment with uh, five machines uh, that basically was used for coordination. Uh, for for the some issues with FoundationDB, we keep them as coordinations because it's too hard to configure for us if we just didn't have time. So. Um, uh, then we deployed about five uh, machines for the storage. Uh, unfortunately, we were uh, forced to deploy the separate machine for backup system because uh, FoundationDB doesn't support uh, Google Cloud storage uh, natively, so we have to some kind of hack it. Uh, and in the end, we just uh, added uh, logs, uh, logs uh, machines. Every machine has about uh, four proce processes, so it's quite a big cluster. Um, yeah, um, why not JS? Because JavaScript is basically just like a toy language. It's not like suitable for production for most of us. Uh, but um, but it, it have a lot of very nice uh, properties. The first one is it's very easy to use. Uh, it have very high performance. It's like almost the like a GoLang and the C++ performance but you just have to write it in correct way. It's just not everything works fast. And um, well, it has very nice GraphQL uh, library that actually integrates very, very easily to, uh, with FoundationDB. Uh, well, it, it have now it has a decent language TypeScript that you, it actually can be considered like a uh, more production ready uh, language. Uh, developer experience is insanely good. So, um, and now there are huge issues uh, with Node.js ecosystem. It's, uh, Node.js just doesn't have any kind of uh, decent uh, uh, distributed frameworks to build your apps. It, it, can, it allows you to build like very simple apps. So it's not, you actually can build, um, like, there are no something like Akka and whatever. Uh, so uh, all libraries that works with SQL is, insanely slow, it's, they are barely, you, you, can, you can actually use them at any decent sized application. So um, for here, and we decided to go into Foundation DB instead of rewriting our app to a new language. Well, um, I already built the three different backends for my streams, and um, uh, my two previous attempts was built on top of Akka, Java, Scala, and all that stuff. But it turns out that uh, you, uh, you, you wait too much uh, weight, uh, you put too much weight on developers because they, all of them have to know what is distributed computing, how to implement this. It's, it became almost impossible to implement. Even, even having like a team of 10 very smart people, uh, they still can't handle it. So, uh, and um, so uh, with FoundationDB, we actually uh, made a step back, and now our app's uh, application server is basically just stateless uh, that serves request in request response style. Uh, and all this complexity is uploaded to FoundationDB. And we use um, uh, Redis for just for message bus. That's, that's all. We are not using anything for caching. So um, unfortunately, there are no there were no any kind of uh, libraries for FoundationDB, for not, not just, uh, and event bindings are unofficial. 
So we decided to roll our own. Uh, it support, it's basically the same record layer that uh, you probably hear today uh, at CloudKit uh, keynote. Uh, so we support uh, like indexes, streaming, uh, um, event sourcing. Uh, we have some kind of sub layers inside of it. Uh, it's, it, and uh, we implement this like in a month, I think, maybe in June. Uh, it was in production for more than one year. It didn't fail uh, failed us, so yeah. Um, so uh, this is how uh, improvement over the SQL libraries on Node.js looks like when we just replaced uh, everything with uh, Foundation DB. So we, uh, when you, you download like a big chunk of data yeah, from SQL in uh, Node.js, uh, it will spend about 800 um, milliseconds uh, just to con convert this data to an object. Uh, it's not because of Node.js is slow, it's just uh, kind of a very old legacy from different libraries, and all these libraries are benchmarked against each other, so they don't see how fast they actually can be. And uh, this green, uh, um, green bar, it's not a parallel. It's completely blocked to the backend. So we basically got about 10 requests per second per process. Uh, so that's, you know, it's, you can do like anything with this. Then we just rewritten everything with Foundation DB, and you can see how small is this. And um, uh, like the small green, uh, blue part actually can be parallel, uh, can be performed in parallel. It's like, you can do about like 40K operations per second, uh, and uh, our Node.js will still handle it without an issue. Um, yeah, let's keep one. So, um, and one of the nice features that we got with Foundation DB is that basically um, uh, we can allow our developers to make much more mistakes. Uh, so basically, uh, we have a very small team. So one of them is, basically kind of in turn. Uh, the second developer is uh, mostly middle engineer, and that's all. Uh, I'm not uh, involved in the backend development anymore, and we are still go going strong. And um, how Foundation DB helps us? Uh, because um, it's so, it has so great performance. Um, it allows us to, um, uh, to deploy bugs uh, safely. <laughs> They didn't affect our uh, like uh, our front end um, uh, without any impact on users. Actually, we rarely look take a look at the uh, graphs graphs and uh, on stats. We usually find these bugs like after a month without like ever noticing anything. You can see it's like was I don't know like 10k per, per second, right? It's skyrocketing like to uh, over the hundred. Just probably just some. Uh, miss a delay or whatever, so it's like, so we, we didn't feel anything, just, this is uh, not because uh, um, uh, Foundation itself is fast, but the client design, Foundation DB client, it can be, it throttle very carefully and uh, can schedule the work evenly across the clients, so uh, it won't interfere with, between uh, different uh, workers, let's say. Uh, it, it was a huge issue on SQL because SQL doesn't have uh, any kind of such uh, scheduling. Um, so there are like little examples how it looks like. Um, so um, our um, our um, our stack, our implementation is very very easy to use and um, nothing nothing like uh, no rocket science here. Uh, so uh, actually. Any junior developer can actually understand how to create object, how to uh, uh, how to store, how to find, how to search, and uh, we opted not to uh, do some kind of uh, shady optimizations and not a lot uh, like uh, like SQL usually do, like query plan, all that stuff. It easily can become unpredictable, especially for newcomers. Uh, so uh, we opted not to use. Uh, auto-incrementing features or all other features that uh, can be slow to implement, so you just have to implement them manually. 
Uh, this saves us from a lot of issues when like engineers just put auto increment fields everywhere and everything became so slow. Uh, so uh, querying, uh, like f finding all the, um, f finding from the user collection is also uh, basically very naive. So you have two options. Uh, so use like, uh, like, a f like a full search and not, um, uh, how to say, you know, it's naive. It's simplest, you, uh, simplest way you can f write to find anything in your database. But you, everyone understands that find all is probably not a good solution for everything. And like, you can easily understand if this uh, better good decision in a specific case. It wasn't the, the true for SQL because when you uh, try to convert this to a SQL query, you probably will he uh, you will uh, you'll, you will need to guess if um, they are like an index, a right index or wrong index. So it's is it like is it a big table or small table? It became very unpredictable, and um, I, explaining this to every engineer is a little bit hard. We, ju we just I just don't want to manage development uh, at some. We just um, in smart startups, uh, founders usually doesn't have focus on everything. We just doesn't have enough, enough time. So the system and team uh, have to work by themselves. So, and um, uh, what, uh, what this, um, if we will need something more uh, performant, we can see uh, that we, uh, um, uh, we have support for indexes and like have much uh, high performance um, and, uh, version of search. So, um, yeah, um, one of the biggest issues, and for everyone, it's probably the last one, uh, the, the only one for working with FoundationDB is the latency, because like, if you were working for a simple apps, you probably didn't think about this, and working on a SQL, you never actually hit the network latencies, like never. And the, for FoundationDB, it's kind of an issue. So for GraphQL, uh, we uh, have like, for example, this small query uh, to fetch the user, my current user, and it's badges. It's like write, write something next to his name. So we basically have to do several queries. The first one will read the version, uh, um, uh, read version. It will take maybe up to 10 milliseconds. Yeah, um, uh, then we will query the, the profile itself. Uh, then we will read the batch info, and we will, it, this will all take about 16 milliseconds. It sounds not very big, but actually, uh, if we will try to read this for 20 users, it became one third of the second, and this became very slow. So in some, but, um, but thankfully for the GraphQL, it solves, it solves for us for free, so it actually can do parallel stuff. Uh, but in some kind of mission critical parts, you just have to rewrite all the code, and this is the only way where you can't use very naive, very primitive approach to build your app. So you can just write, and it will just work uh, without learning SQL, um, probably without uh, indexes and all that stuff. So um, yeah, that, that's about the all. Uh, so in the end, I, I can say that FoundationDB turns out super fast, very reliable. Uh, uh, found, and our platform allows uh, our developer, even front end developers, to write uh, features for our backend without breaking anything. And we don't have much tests, I can confess. So it's, like, it's, it's a miracle that we we work like, I don't know, we, we have like 100% uptime in the last half year, I think. Uh, so it's like, <laughs> how's that possible? Uh, yeah, and uh, it's, I don't know, it's very, uh, it's really hard to uh, shoot in your, uh, in your food uh, because you can see uh, all the complexity of all operations, and you basically use the same language for everything, and it works just fast because we basically um, uh, because how light our our libraries are. 
we have a lot of room for do all of the shitty stuff uh, that you can do on JavaScript. So, and we, in the end, we have basically zero maintenance. It's mostly just experiments. I do all my experiments on production system. So, yeah, uh, it actually worked. So, because of this, we had like 30 seconds of downtime. Uh, it was just due, during upgrade uh, for a new version. It's just uh, the issue with uh, unofficial uh, not just bindings. Um, yeah, that's all. Thank you.